about 12 years ago, that first camp, women's camp we've had. Suzanne, she was just starting to take lead. I do have a voice and a strong voice and I do hold our women's law because that was the responsibility that they gave me within our camp. You know, and continuing the work that my mum and I and my skin aunties had started. So I've come home after being away for 25 years. Following the dream and following my journey um, towards setting up women's camps, um, more so about um, bringing back the um, song lines and in particular the women's song lines. And what I'm finding since coming home now, um, you know, we've been in drought and it's probably one of the longest, almost one of the longest droughts. And I have a very strong belief that is the, you know, that we have not maintained connection to country and we have stopped song and we have stopped ceremony. It's really important that, that if this is, you know, their country, that they can come back onto country, that they do that. And then for me, living here, that's what I want as well, because there's all that, all of that knowledge of 60,000 years is a lot more than, you know, 20 or 30 or 50 years of grazing. It's always going to be a lot more. Song lines are sort of these pathways that connect right across Australia. They were trade routes as well, and at each tribe or each clan has their own verse in their own language, but it's that one song. And so, and, and that's how then I'm continually singing that song throughout keeps that song line alive, keeps, um, I suppose, what the purpose of it is alive. Um, and so for us out here, the, our um, and that connects through to all the rainmakers, the keepers of water, the protectors of water, the sacredness of water. Because um, we knew by burning off country, but we also knew that we needed to bring in the rain. And then from that point though, then the, the white settlers came in and brought their sheep in and dried up those sacred springs where the rainbow serpent lived, or the serpent lived, Mundagara is what we were calling. There's a whole lot of that connection which we tend to ignore because we have a European background so we think we've got to do it like the Europeans when this is not European country. You know what I mean? It's about, it's a, bit, it's a lot more about listening and responding rather than control. Being on country for an Aboriginal person is not just about being out in the bush. It's more about a connection. It's about a connection to the land and to their ancestors who were born, lived and died on that land. That's why it's so important for them to be in their own country, because that's where they can get this connection. And, and it's difficult for us to understand. It, you have to live it. This is why Robin and Suzanne are setting up these camps for people, Indigenous and non-Indigenous people, to get together, to live the Aboriginal experience, to live, to be on country. And if they can be on country, if they can, you know, through women's camps or just through camping out or just being here, that they get a little understanding of that, then that's going to have to be a good thing. So that when droughts happen and that sort of stuff, you know, they don't just send us cookies. Here for us in the creation story is when the rainbow serpent comes through and there's a, a very significant site. Um, um, very sacred site that tells the story of the rainbow serpent coming. The footprints are there and then there's baby footprints with six toes and then it moves into the emu. So it was I create you as the tribe and then you are the emu people and it happens here and then our ceremonies would happen around those times. There are many ceremonial ceremonies that I'm needing to seek out to sit with because slowly over the years I want to be able to slowly bring back that ceremony for women um, and that creation story.